Hey everybody, this is Zach with IT Career Questions and today I have Cody Mercer here with us and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about himself. Hi Zach, uh, thank you for, for having me to speak. Uh, a little bit about myself, I started my cybersecurity professional career uh, roughly 15 plus years ago. Uh, I was a cryptographer and uh, did a lot of different things within the cybersecurity world. Um, that includes incident response, threat and vulnerability management, reverse engineering, uh, risk management. Uh, I was a signal intelligence operator, human intelligence operator for a national security agency. I did ethical hacking, hacking for the Department of Defense. Uh, what else? Worked in multiple private and public sectors. I currently now work at a company called Malwarebytes, one of the leaders in, in endpoint protection solutions. Uh, I've been with them for about three or four months now as a threat analyst. So that's a little bit, a little bit of background about myself. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, a lot there, man. Here, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help people who who want to get into more so the security field. Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of questions that mm -hmm. way. You know, mm -hmm. is there anything that you could? recommend sure. advice that you could give for people who are looking to get into the security side of things? Sure, so first of all, I would say, do you like security? Or are you only getting into security because that's the hype and we know that there's a lack of uh, qualified personnel uh, to, to fill those spots? Is security something that you actually like doing? Me, I, I fell in love with it when I joined the military again as a cryptographer um, and it's one of those evolving uh, types of professions that's always changing. So we always see the threat landscape changing, new exploits coming into place and everything like that. So I would say make sure that before you get into the cybersecurity profession, make sure that it's really something you like doing because it's not a easy subject to, to grasp. Like if you want to go to college and learn how to be an English teacher, you know, study English literature or something, you know, but cybersecurity, uh, because it's also a not only a profession, but a, a hobby and a, a something I'm passionate about that I read about it regularly and learn about new things, you know, so that plays a big part into being successful within that career field. So first and foremost, I would say just make sure that it's something that you want to do before you actually start looking into it. Um, so when it comes to passion, I, I almost think of like some working at a national security agency, I got exposed to a lot of different training things that I can't really talk about, but mm -hmm. almost like uh, social engineering type things and you know, I when I think of cybersecurity now for me and what motivates me and makes it passionate is almost like uh, 007, double agents, you know, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise type things, you know, and the same concept, you know, so it's like you're not yeah. just sitting in front of a computer like we see, you know, in the, uh, the pictures of the typical hacker sitting in the basement, you know, so uh, th there's a lot more to it. Um, so that's one of the passions and motivations that drives me is just, again, the, how it changes and everything like that and, you know, uh, keeping it interesting. And it's not one of those things that you just learn and then it's done and you're over and, and you die. You know, it's one of those things that's always changing again, like I mentioned, and it's always something new to learn. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing that I uh, always hit on is um, passion in mm -hmm. this field because mm -hmm. I feel like without it, you might fall behind right. because you you constantly have to learn. You right. constantly have to be exactly. on your toes, learning exactly. new things, what's happening, especially in the in the security field. I mean, yep. that's just a yep. that's a whole new realm of things that you have to stay up to date on. That, that, that's a good point. Um, so I just did a talk, and that was one of the things I talked about is, yes, things are always changing, and there's new types of information that you have to learn to be successful uh, within the cybersecurity game, but you also have to know the basics and the, and the roots of it, too, so the very base layer, and that's one of the things I talked about was going back to the basics, you know, and some of the basic fundamentals that we overlook. Um, so not only do you have to learn new stuff that's always, but you also have to get the background first before, you know, it's not the, the buggy in front of the horse, it's the horse in the buggy, right? Right, so. <laughs> perfect, yeah. Um, so with the, you kind of mentioned the basics there, you know, if, if you were going to give somebody advice who just wants to get in the IT field mm -hmm. in general, yeah. not necessarily security, yeah. you know, what, what would you tell them? You know, I would, of, yeah, so the first thing I would do is ask, there's so many different um, sectors and areas within IT, yeah, right? So we have security, we have operations, we have research and development, we have engineering. So really, what is it you like to do? Do you like to do just basic admin work and you like to create key accounts? Do you like to be in IT doing engineering and build out, building out infrastructures? Do you want to, do you like coding and sitting behind and banging out code all day and creating 
um, you know, applications. Do you like to do web design? Are you an artist and like to do graphics? And so, do you want to do web design? So, figure out what you like doing first and then see if you can apply that to one of those particular niche niches within the IT field. Yep. Perfect. Yep. That's great advice right there. Something that I, I think I tell everybody, you know, find exactly what you want to do and there's tons of, you know, opportunities out there or ways to research this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, especially with YouTube, you know, uh -huh. like in YouTube everything and uh -huh. really get a behind the scenes feel on yep. uh, each of these different areas. Right. And then, and then the side note to that is that once you figure out what you want to do, there's a lot of really free online courses that are now made available. Like I'm not promoting any, mm -hmm. any of these and I don't get paid to say this, but like Coursera and Udemy and, you know, things on YouTube and stuff like that to where before you start going to college or you invest money to go get a certification, maybe go check and check out these free classes and do them a little bit and, and make sure that's exactly what you want right. to do. Cause sometimes you get yourself into something and be like, I really don't like this. Well, you've already invested the money and you've also lost the time now. So that would be right. a, a piece of advice that I would give. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Great advice. All right, so you said that you started in the cryptography. Mm -hmm. Can you go into any detail on that? On sure. how you got there and sure. a little bit behind the scenes of that? Yeah, so I came into the military and um, <clears throat> there's only a select limited amount of jobs that are available, right? So based off of, you have to do initial testing when you go into the military and based off of your scoring system, that will dictate what category of jobs that you're allowed to get into, right? So I really didn't know a whole lot about cryptography at the time, you know, very, all I knew was, was code, was codes, right? And encryption, right? That's what I understood it to be. Um, but then once I actually got the training on it and learning about it, and I like mathematics as well, so there's a lot of mathematics within cryptography. And um, just to briefly kind of explain what cryptography is, it's essentially just taking information, scrambling it up, applying some type of encryption process to it, and then giving it to another person, and then they decrypt it and get it. And so um, if you think of wartime environments where you have to do communications over the internet and over the computer or via phone, you don't want to send just plain text information, you know, to you know, say we're going to go um, battle with this particular area as a, as a real, you know, Right. A hypothetical situation, you know, so it's the process of encrypting and de decrypting data and coding and everything like that, yeah. Awesome. So have you always been interested in, in tech? Is that something that... Yeah, that so I, I have uh, ever since high school. Uh, I got my first, like, Microsoft certification when I was, like, in ninth or 10th grade or something like that, and I started... Now, I take that back. I actually got really into uh, computers when I took my first computer science class in eighth grade in the late 90s, which is dating me. <laughs> but uh, I learned how to uh, program QBasic, which was Bill Gates' one of his first programming languages. And from there, it was very simplistic, uh, you know, very rudimentary type stuff. But I think from there, it was, that's what kind of sparked my interest, you know, because it's, it's one of those things that really causes you to think. It's not one of those jobs where you just go and sit in front of a desk and, right. you know, file TPS reports, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's, I like the challenge of it, and, uh, and that's what kind of drove me to stay in that field. And then I like doing computers, so that's what I wanted to do for the military. And then they're like, why don't you take out cryptography, cybersecurity? And then that's how that kind of uh, platforms. Are there any specific uh, recommendations that you would, uh, you know, give to people or advice that you would give coming out of the military, mm -hmm. um, getting into the field? Yeah, so I still got a lot of friends. I was in the military active duty for a little under 10 years, been a reservist now for four, and I have friends. During that time is when I got my degrees, uh, college degrees, right? So I was essentially working, you know, several jobs, right? So I was doing military work, but I was also working on my degrees because I knew that... I wasn't going to stay in the military and retire for 30 years like a lot of other people, right? So I set myself up for success. So with that being said, start working on, um, you know, get a college degree, unfortunately. Two, two parts to that. Uh, unfortunately, to even get a notice now, you have to see a college degree. On the flip side of that, there's a lot of companies like Google and Facebook, they don't care if you have a college degree. They give you a test, a coding test or something, and if you're good at it, proficient about it, they don't care if you've never been to school. If you can do that job good, they will hire you. So that's a good thing about the IT industry now, is that if you can pass those entry-level tests, you can get your foot in the door. But for a large majority now, outside of that, that spectrum, 
Um, you do want to have a college degree in that field at least and also uh, I worked on multiple certifications. Certifications are huge so um, working for the Department of Defense they require two different types of certifications that you have to have. One is the Security Plus and another one is related to security, right? So um, get as many certifications knocked out as you can um, and then have a plan. You know, luckily the military provides um, <clears throat> different types of programs for people who are transitioning uh, from the military into the civilian sector and they teach you things uh, like how to transcribe in, in words what you do in the military to uh, like civilian lingo right mm -hmm. uh, something that they understand you know so there's preparatory um, uh, type courses that are given in the military to help you with that process but then again it's really it's up to you to um, set yourself up for success by having those degrees and having those certifications and things like that sure sure yeah. um, which certifications do you have do you hold right now uh, so I had multiple certifications and now I'm at the level where uh, so Active ones I have is Certified Ethical Hacker and CompTIA Sec Plus. But prior to that, uh, I had those, and then Sec Plus, Net Plus, CCNA, and I, I, wa I wanted to have a bunch of certifications because depending on the job that you want to do in IT again, like if you want to go do uh, routing and networking, they want to see CCNA certification or something, right? So um, I didn't. I just got it because the military lets you get it for free. And, you know, you still have to do the, the studying on your own, but right. they'll pay for the, the class and the test if you can pass it, right? So um, those are just a few of the certifications. So again, depending on what particular niche within the IT industry, look at those certifications. Usually they're going to be something related to Microsoft or uh, CompTIA um, or IT2 or something like that. Yeah. As far as like uh, different trends that you are seeing in the, in the security field, mm -hmm. um, do you want to go in a, in a little bit of detail on that? Like what, yeah, what's so kind of hot? There's always new trends. Um, one of the biggest ones is the cryptocurrency craze is what we're yeah. calling it, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. uh, there's roughly almost 1,500 different types of cryptocurrency in circulation and it relies on a process known as blockchaining. Um, unfortunately, to, to mine cryptocurrency, you have to use this process known as blockchaining, and because there's so much hype in it, uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities within uh, blockchaining that can be exploited by threat actors, so that's a huge um, uh, trend that we're seeing. Also, what we're seeing is all the devices now that want to have an IP address on it, like a refrigerator and an oven and things that have no business, yeah, kids' dolls right. and stuff. They're being used for things like DDoS attacks and botnet armies. So that's going to continue to rise because more and more people want to have and be able to connect to the internet. I mean, and it's there's reasoning behind it. It makes life a little bit simpler and more easy, you know. But at the same time, um, that attack surface that you're trying to protect is widening greatly. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's becoming huge. Yeah. I mean, your doorbell, son. Uh, yeah, you know, is uh, yeah. is connected to your uh, your you home phone and, and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So exactly. It's, it's insane. Right. Um, is there anything that you specifically want to talk uh, about? Yeah, well, just to reiterate again, you know, um, I get asked a lot with friends, just like you asked, because they see me now, uh, you know, and what I do, and it's kind of like, it's a precarious situation because you have to make that choice. Do I want to stick it out with the military for the next 20 years and, and retire and get that little, you know, uh, retirement check each month and, and die a happy man? Or do I want to get out and go into the real world and, and, and make that uh, that transition? So, you know, I get asked a lot, well, what certification, what certification should I get? What should I specifically be doing? And it's like I mentioned before, those two things. Make sure you're either working on a college degree and what you decide you want to do, know what you want to do, and mm -hmm. then uh, look into the certifications that are offered within that, what you decide to do. So those three things. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that, that's all I had all for right, you. Great. So Thank I appreciate you so much. your time. Thanks right. for uh, Thank being you. on. Thank you, sir. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Oh.